Hello, Cricketers, and welcome to Cricketing with Delanda. It's me again, Delanda, and I'm not going to be on the camera today, but I know you see this bag. I will show you everything about the, what's in this bag as soon as we get started. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Turn on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week without fail. So, and I want you to be here with me for every step of the way. So go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button and let's get started. If you see this bag, you already know. <laughs> something has happened. I went to Dollar Tree and I purchased some of their some of their glass plates. I think I bought about five of them. They come, you know, I just picked up five and the lady put these um, dividers in between them. Um, they come with this little sticker on the back and it's kind of hard to get it off. But when I needed to get mine off, I used uh, some rubbing alcohol and my scraper and I just scraped. Um, you will also need for this project. Um, I use my light grip standard mat. I was connected to my Cricut Explore Air 2. I used Armor Etch, a paintbrush. I only use one glove, but you know, I'm, I'm a daredevil. You can use two. I also used um, the Paper Studio brand of stencil vinyl, but you could use any brand of stencil vinyl, or you could just use um, regular um, removable vinyl that, you know, if you have a color that you don't really love, you could use that. It doesn't have to be stencil material, but I had some, so I used it. All right, and so those are the materials that I use, uh, and you know, I use water. Um, this is the design that I purchased from Design Bundles. This is how my um finished product looks let's see if you can see i don't know if that helps you see it probably not let's see if i put it behind this pink that do that doesn't help you either let me get a piece of black card okay so hopefully you can see that better this is what the finished product looks like and i think it's so cute this is not my first time doing glass etching the etching is on the bottom of the plate so i had to mirror my design but i will share all of that with you um dollar tree does sell glass plates in this size but they also have the smaller ones um this is one that i did a while ago this file is available in my Facebook group, and they're actually using this file for their Cricut Crafting Challenge that is going on right now. Um, if you're watching this video in November of 20, 2021. All right, so without further ado, let us head on over and see the bundle that I purchased from in Design Bundles, and then we will go right into Cricut Design Space, and I'll show you how to resize your image and to get it um, ready for um glass etching this is the bundle that i used for um doing the the glass etching tonight it came with 400 different designs with every single file type eps dxf svg and png is currently five dollars i think i paid 90 cents for it because i purchased it um, on the design bundles one dollar deal day and it just has a ton and you know, 400 is not a ton, but it feels like a ton of different files that are ready for you to use uh, for all of your crafting needs. So this is the one that I used um, in the tutorial tonight. And I also used this one when I did the Dollar Tree um, pot holders. Um, so you know, there are just a lot of different options. A lot, I know a lot of people like gnomes, so there are gnomes. It's just, it's so much here. Um, I also use this one when I did my Christmas uh, sublimation ornaments. So just wanted to share the file that I uh, purchased from, the bundle that I purchased from for tonight's tutorial, okay? Okay, I am in Cricut Design Space and what I measured on the bottom of the plate was six point, approximately 6.5, a circle that's approximately 6.5. So what I will do is grab a shape that is approximately 6.5 by 6.5 and then upload the design. I've already uploaded it, it's this one that is uh, says Christmas calories don't count 
it's going to come in pretty big and I will bring the view down on my canvas to about 50% and then also bring the size of this file down. I think when I uploaded it before, the reason why it came out a little bit too big is because I didn't use a circle. I used a square for my template and that's that's I think that's what happened. OK, um, and you'll see once I start to apply the design because I'm kind of recording the video out of order, but you'll you'll get the gist. All right. So the size of the design that I actually did, let me show you what I did. And so you don't make the same mistake. I used a square as my template and I made it 6.5 and you'll see that. Let me bring it to the front. You'll see that um, once I unlock it and bring it down, this is the size of the design that I ended up using. And that's much bigger than the, the bottom of the plate. So you'll see that once I start to apply this to the bottom of the plate, it's a little bit too big, but um, you don't make the same mistake. Be better than me. All right. So the next thing I did was I um, I tried attaching it at first and I still just didn't like the way it looked because I was concerned about see these little dots and just the little pieces. So um, my smart self, <laughs> I just decided to weld it. Um, so I had a welded image and um, I don't need this template and I also don't need this one. I clicked make it. And because I want this image to be on the bottom of the plate, I turn the mirror on and I click continue. I'm connected to my Cricut Explore Air 2. And the material that I chose is stencil vinyl. OK, just regular default pressure, um, nothing in clamp B. And then, you know, I showed you the rest of it when I was back on the camera. OK, so that is that process. I am connected to my Cricut Explore Air 2. I load it. I have my stencil vinyl on the light grip mat um, and it is face up. I have my dial set to custom and I selected stencil vinyl and I have the mirror on. So my design is mirrored, mirrored on the uh, preparation screen. Okay, I will click the, see, I'm gonna click the arrow, the flashing arrow and speed this part up to get it cut out. I have the design cut out and I don't know if you can the glare from the light is not good but hopefully you can see that it's here now I will um, weed, weed this design and since I'm doing reverse weeding because I'm really just making a stencil that will go on the bottom of the plate um, there are pieces in this design that will need to stay on the on the stencil backing okay so I will so cheap I am so cheap let me because I always look I can use this this is not trash it's still a good piece right there finish with this this is still good I can use this for something else now I will get the other pieces of this weeded out and what you can't see off camera 
um, is that I'm looking at the image in Design Space so I can see which pieces to um, which pieces to keep on the mat. I mean, on the on the backing. And which pieces need to come off. So I know the letters need to come off. But like not the inside of the letters. Those, those stay. So what you would normally keep on, those are the parts you take off. So this is confusing if you haven't ever done this before. I do have another tutorial where I did um, glass etching. So if this one doesn't answer questions for you, go back, I'll link, I'll leave a link to that one down in the description below this video. Okay, I'll speed this part up. much as I think I need to. I won't be able to tell until I, you know, start to transfer it. But um, so now I will get a piece, cut a piece of transfer tape and put on top of this and I'll burnish it and I'll get it moved over to the bottom of my plate. Okay, so I'll just cut a piece of transfer tape. big enough to cover this. Use my big scraper. all of this up and transfer it to the um, plate. I don't use my um, light grip mat very often. I, I really don't. That's why it's so clean. But let's see. Let's see. I did wipe the plate down with um, alcohol because those Dollar Tree plates come with a sticker on the bottom and it is really hard to get the sticker off. So I had to use my um, spatula, my little Cricut spatula tool. I'm always having a hard time with this kind of stuff. Let me get this started. I always have a hard time. There I go. So the goal is to not have anything left on this backing. So far, so good. And if you get a little piece, kind of just help it out. Push it back down actually burnish the back. Mm, his smile. His smile needs to go with the rest of his body. Let's 
One little piece that's trying to be difficult. Let me just help it out. It's always got to be one. Always. try my best to center this oh my design is kind of big for my um, plate but guess what we're gonna make it do what it do it's a little bit too big but hopefully it's still cute <laughs> I thought I measured good. I thought I measured it good enough, but I guess I didn't. So, what will I say? Sherry. Sherry can tell you what I will say. I will say, be better than me. Don't be like me. You don't want any bubbles. Bubbles are not good. I don't think that's going to look bad with that little piece hanging off. And if it does, guess what? I'm not selling it, so it's okay. I should have done a better job of centering this, though. So. I'm gonna be very careful when I add the um on the itch. In the same way I needed to make sure that I didn't have any pieces left on my backing. I need to make sure there are no pieces left on this transfer tape. Transfer tape is reusable. So this is not this is not trash. Stick that thing back on there. So now I have my design on my plate. There are a lot of um, air bubbles. So I will be very careful when I am applying the, the armor edge. I'll be very careful. And if I were to do this again, um, I would be careful about how I centered it but hopefully you can see that all right let me get a um paintbrush oh it's right here i'm actually not going to use gloves would i recommend gloves sure but i'm i'm not going to use any because I think I need them. What I am going to do though is make sure there are no spaces or bubbles in the design where I plan to do the armor edge because what will happen and it might happen anyway um is that the armor edge gets under that under the bubbles and it just it looks it doesn't look nice at all so you're doing yours so like right here, this is a perfect example. 
don't know if you can see that. Make sure there's no space and here's another. So as I'm applying this, see how that right there? Not good. The goal is to not have any bubbles where you will be applying it. And to get it in there thick. Might just use a dabbing motion instead of like a brushing motion. I'll get it started and then I'll speed this part up. The reason why I'm not using gloves, not yet, I might use it when I get ready to rinse this off, um, is because I know I'm not gonna touch this. Okay, I'll speed the rest of this up. Okay, I have my uh, design completely covered in the armor etch. And typically, you know, most people recommend, let's see what the bottle recommends, how long. This is the Lud uh, Protection Rubber Gloves. Um, I pretty much, oh, it says uh, keep it on for one to three minutes. I promise you mine will be on longer than that. <laughs> I typically keep mine on for a longer period of time. Much longer than three minutes. Much longer than, I would say 15 minutes is, is about standard for me. Because I it is in my experience that the longer you keep it on, the better of an etch you will get. A better etched result. So... I will come back in about 15 minutes after letting this sit. And when I come back on, I'll be downstairs at my sink and I'll be ready to rinse this off. It has been approximately 15 minutes or more, maybe. <laughs> and I am going to turn on the water and um, let it get warm. And I have on one one glove, you know, Michael Jackson effect. And let me get the water get warm. And I will adjust my camera so you can see me. And the reason why I'm not using two gloves is because I'm not going to touch this um, with my other hand. Alright, so I will just start to kind of wipe it off. It feels like little crystals, like it feels like the armor etch like crystallizes a little bit. So if yours feels clumpy like that, that's totally normal. I do know they sell Armor Edge at Hobby Lobby, but I purchased mine from Amazon. I have not seen it in Michaels. They might have it in Michaels, but I haven't seen it here. And I haven't seen it in um, Walmart either. But 
Doesn't mean that it doesn't, that they don't sell it. I just haven't seen it there. If I don't get a good image here, I will definitely go back and try it again. If I could um, okay, so now you can just start to peel it away. would have been if I would have been a little more gentle more gentler that's, that's not right <laughs> if I would have been a little more gentle could I have um, saved the stencil I don't know it came out nice it came out nice though okay hold on Let me, um, I'm just taking this off my. Okay, so here's a better view of the finished product. And I'm going to say what I always say, which is I am in love with it. I shared the materials with you. I will leave a list down in the description below for every material that I use for this project. And, you know, including the bundle that I purchased from Design Bundles. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Turn on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week without fail. I am on the road to 4,000 subscribers and I want you to join me every single time. Thanks so much for joining me today and thanks for watching. Bye.